heating flake. And the 1970s advert was the highest peak for flake, but also it's when it's got banned. And then throughout then, they did continue to the 1980s and 1990s, but then in 2010 they tried to bring it back, which honestly was more of a failure as the advert came across boring and didn't really imply a sort of satisfaction to the audience. We've got a video to show the 1970s. who is under the age of 16 so it would imply that she wouldn't really be suitable for the role but in future she could be because she's not too far under the age limit but we do have a backup who is over the age limit who would be perfectly free during the time we need her and we've already talked to her about it and she said as long as certain she's gave us certain dates she can't be available so we could easily sort around that. The reason we chose um, our first actress is because she is extremely reliable, we can get hold of her nearly any time we want to and it's we've worked with her in the past and it's worked very well. With our actors, it, we were going to choose John Calvert as he is usually punctual and quite, um, he's good at acting and he can heal he's dedicated to roles, but we have had issues with him saying that he will most likely not be able to film this um, term because he's got other things that are important at the moment going around, so he has said it's not a full promise that we can do it. So in a backup idea, we've got two candidates that could be useful, is uh, another friend who is called Alfie, who we can get hold of, and he said he'll be all right doing it, but we're not sure when he's free. And worst alternative, I can always act myself for the second part, as Holly could always do the filming of it. And for the directors, camera operators and editors, it would just be me and Holly, as we wouldn't need to rely on anyone else, and we know what we want to do with the advert. The locations maybe that we'll be using would be London and all the London, Hyde Park, maybe Trafalgar Square, etc. As it keeps the whole Cadbury's of being British and it loses quite uh, well known buildings, such as like Big Ben or whatnot. And also, it keeps the whole casual uh, actress and actor thing, uh, yeah, actor feeling. It makes it very, uh, it makes it definitely show to the viewer that it's a definite British advert showing very no well-known British um, mon monuments such like Big Ben and Trafalgar Square, Hyde Park would be there and it would be easier for us to get to as it's only a train trip away and it wouldn't be too much hustle. And then our alternative would be if London is an issue due to this coming the Christmas holidays it would be busier etc in certain locations. Romford isn't that far away and it still has sort of the Streetwise, sort of. We could still get all the same type of shops we want, it would just be not of London, but it still would appeal to the British audience as it would have British actions going on, such as certain shops that you would only see around Britain. Uh, for our market re research, we decided to do quality of data, which is where we produced quite, we produced around 10 questionnaires where we got our target audience to sign go through an uh, answer and throughout this we got, gathered about when their interest, what time they usually watch TV etc and we even got down to what favourite chocolate bars they like to eat and we even got their own personal opinions about what they think of our adverts for our they, advert. Their opinion on our idea and our slogan to see if we could make any improvements to appeal to them more. 
and they all seem to quite like it. And from the research we got, the majority are very interested in Breaking Bad, which will be able to appeal to our advert as it does have that dramatic tone to it all. And yeah, and also social networking was quite a big one as well. And when it comes to who we're actually appealing to, it will still be keep it to the typical flake of appealing to women, but also we want to re relate it to men this time as well, so it able for to flake work. to appeal to a much larger audience rather than just keep, keeping it to female. And that's why we've got a male and female cast in our advert. With the Breaking Bad, again, that helps us with our scheduling of where the advert placements would be due to finding out what further research and what sh show it's, what channel it's shown on and what time it's on during TV. Also, we found out the majority of our audience is either in the D or E group of the social economic scale, which tells us that most of them are n not high earning money pay, and but that isn't too much of a big deal for us as we've got flake that flakes that chocolate that doesn't cost way too not too much um, we also found out with the advert every, every single one we did 100% of them either ticked the late peak or the night time showings so eight onwards people have been watching TV for our audience as well as they all seem to be very into listening to music a lot. So that's where the music in our background would come in handy as they also said they like gaming. Mm -hmm. from, our, uh, from our questionnaire we did a rating of 1 to 5 and 1 being brilliant and 5 being poor. And from that Maltesers came out top. But we did also did Flake, and Flake wasn't that too far off being a very well known, very likable product. And also, we got down of asking what they what first came to their mind when they thought of Flake, and that was mainly crumbly and messy, which was proven a few months ago. And once again, as we said here, it shows that we did an evening and night time. Everyone was ticking either one of them two boxes. With Maltese as well, it's not really our competitor in the market of chocolate as it's not the same type of chocolate of being a long bar that crumbles while Maltesers are just small balls that are covered in chocolate. Uh, with our also market research we went to stores such as Tesco's ads as to see where Flake was positioned and who was and what other chocolate brands were next to it and from this we got Flake was quite at eye level, maybe a bit higher, and also that the main uh, chocolate that was near it was 12, which we came to realise it's sort of a t competitor, as 12 has the same sort of features and texture as Flake. And also, we did research into comparing for where Tesco, that what like Tesco, St. Jude, as and what price they do. And they all turn for Flake. Out to have the same like, price on it on shown on this website here. Yeah. Um, but we did find out that in smaller shops, like Tesco Express, even though the bigger brands is the same, they sell it for more than the normal Tesco. The main competitors for Flake will be Twirl and Ripple, being that they both try and, it, and imitate Flake itself, but they don't really come across as that strong with it. And from our questionnaire, we did a rating of 1 to 5, and the main competitor that came out of Flake was Ripple, as they both got rated the average of two, while 12 was four. They all turned out to be the same price on Tesco's website to, for us to compare the prices of them. And as you can see on all the pictures, Flake seems the most crumbliest of them all, really, yeah. as it's less protected wire. Ripple has like a co, and so does 12. But even though tw Ripple and Flake was rated the same, Flake has a lot of spin-off products, the most famous one being the 99 Flake, being used in a lot of ice creams, that boosts up its value quite a lot, as well as having other products such as a Flake cake and a yoghurt pop Flake. The 99p one's the one that's most common out of the actual Flake bar itself as well, and is very probably popular during the summer times, as that's when ice cream van has about, and many people usually order 99p's which then keeps the 
Flake still within quite a majority of the audience. And we all does not have any spin-off products as far as we've researched it. Uh, with our production budget, our th we have a £30 limit of max, uh, £30 max limit. And then we'll be mainly buying quite a few chocolate bars to take up to London, as London is more expensive than around this area. And also travel card, which is 870 we'll also be buying probably about maybe two days max up London, so that will slowly add up. Yeah, and with our camera equipment, our editing software, and going on buses if we end up going to Romford instead of London, that would all cost free due to us having student Oyster cards and being able to get the editing equipment and the filming equipment from the schools. Uh, with scheduling and placement, it turns out these are the main channels that we have chosen, but also when it came to the questionnaires, we asked what time and um, time do our audience usually watch a TV show and he all said about 8 o'clock till later, like midnight or etc. which then comes in our favour for when we want to, so it makes us be able to put our advert into placement so that the audience is able to watch it without skipping the channel, it's to, it's skipping the channel or what? Um, E4 turned out on our questionnaire to be the most popular tipped advert that we had listed down as well as other people writing extra shows they may have watched. So we made sure when it came to the product, choosing the budgeting for it, we made sure that E4 got a lot of budget for things. After doing a bit of research on Breaking Bad as well, I found out it was it was shown on Channel 5 at 11pm, so we made sure that we had a, quite a few times around that time on um, Channel 5. Another popular TV ch channel that was chosen in the questionnaire was um, MTV and how that is a very popular channel for teenagers and Viva is quite the same and they co both of their costs are very low so it was a good um, channel to dosh out a lot of money on to get a lot of adverts on to spread to other people who watched that and they could tell their friends and so on. Through this chart that I've made it shows that we made most of our more than half of our videos on MTV, but that's generally because it costs so cheap to put them on only £50 per advert. But Channel 5 and E4, because they were the most in, most voted and most viewed shows that the audience told us, we made sure that we spent quite a lot of money on that and made sure we had a lot of videos on them too. And we spent the t completely on the dot, the million budget we had, having 1,100 and 27 adverts in total. With the technical resources, we'll be wanting to use a digital camera, a tripod to film the actual f footage for the production as it's just the basic necessities. And for the editing software, we would be using a Mac with um, Final Cut Express, as I'm very familiar with Final Cut Express and know how to work it and worked with it before and um, know that it's got very, quite a lot of professional features that I can use to my advantage to change up some non-existent features that were we wanted while filming but could add in after. This is pretty much the outline of when we'll start filming and the pre-production stages and also which will be for our Christmas holidays, but also when it comes after Christmas holidays, one thing we haven't checked is when our exam dates are, as this could disrupt our filming schedule or editing schedule, so we'll have to find that out beforehand. And also if our cast members have any sort of uh, prime things to attend to if they have exams themselves. Well done guys, that was very good. Miss? I like the idea, I think it's, it's good, it works well. Um, 